Right. So my take is uni is not for all. I have my disclaimers here. Disclaimers is that uni, I believe uni is a great surgical option. Uni has to be done in a selected patients. Until date, I'm not disappointed with outcomes of any of the unis that I have done. So I believe uni is a great option, but there are many issues with uni. So let's consider all of those. My, my take is that uni is not for all surgeons and uni is not for all patients. So let's look at the global perspective of uni or the penetration of uni. Now in USA, this is a paper from 2018, there was steady increase in the uni usage from 2002 to 2008. But since then, there has been a steady decline in the uni usage. The Australian data, registry data in 2018 suggested that in 2003, there were 16.9% primary needs being done by uni. In 2017, it is only 8.6%. Similar from National Joint Registry of England and Wales, and it is showing a constant use of under just under 9%. So uni usage is not increasing. In fact, it is decreasing in the Western world. The survival rate, uh, if you consider survival rate of TKR versus uni for primary OA, the Australian registry data suggests that at 10 years survival is 94 against 84. So significant 10% drop in the survival of unis at 10 years. Similar register, uh, results from Swedish registry and the England and Wales registry. Now, 14% cumulative revision rate for TKR was 6% versus almost 17% for uni. And this is from England and Wales National Joint Registry. And uh, cumulative data from six national registries and clinical studies as again suggested that the revision rate was much higher for unis as against the TKA. So survival rate is not as good. Now, it can easily be explained on the basis that there is a very low threshold for offering a revision for a uni. Anytime a patient comes to a surgeon with painful uni, he has very low threshold for offering a revision. And that can easily be the reason for this higher revision rate. Completely accept that. It is technically demanding, as we heard uh, all through the morning. Uh, it is certainly tends to have increased surgical complication rates, especially for surgeons who are not used to doing unis and reoperation rates tend to be higher. The perceived advantages are, oh, it's a minor surgery, it's much conservative bone dissection, decreased medical complications as seen in several papers, early recovery as we see very well, good range of motion, easy conversion to total knee. And I think we, we can debate all of that. Now, classical indications, we have all heard of those. I'll not go into the details of this. So I think it's worth looking at the classical Oxford criteria for patient selection. I think these really have to be looked at by anybody who wants to practice uh, uni as a, you know, uh, in, in, as a arthroplasty option. Now, these are the classical uh, indications. Let's debate. Uh, let's look at the details. I think the, really you need to understand that whether your patient is suitable for a uni or not has to be decided. Now, medial bone to bone contact has to be established. Now, with the x-ray that you see on the bottom, I see sometimes just because patient is complaining of pain, you offer uni for that. That is a bad, bad, bad uh, surgical option. You have to look at the functionality of normal ACL. And uh, if you really have a good lateral view, whereby both femoral condyles are overlapping on each other, you should be seeing the erosion on the tibial side only on the anterior, anterior half. And it should not be posterior. Now, many times this is difficult to see on uh, X-rays. X-rays are not good quality. Many times they are not, uh, rotation is not proper. And you cannot really judge that. So if you are not sure about the integrity of ACL, either clinically or on the X-ray, uh, whereby you're trying to look for intermedial osteoarthritis, one should actually get an MRI, which is not so expensive in our country, and look at the what the ACL looks like and establish even the intermedial osteoarthritis. Now that can easily be done by an MRI. So anytime you have doubts about the suitability of the patient with respect to ACL functionality, you should get an MRI. Now, full thickness lateral cartilage obviously is important. You should also probably get a skyline view for, to look at the buttal femoral joint. But all these have to be really critically looked at before you decide on uh, uh, offering the uni for the patient. Now, uni is not for all surgeons. It's certainly not forgiving for surgical errors. We still saw many. I'll show you some uh, examples of that in this talk as well. There is certainly a steep learning curve. And it's a completely different philosophy as far as the limb alignment goes. As we heard all through the morning, it has to be undercorrected. The knee, the knee has to be in virus uh, for a medial uni uh, at the end of the surgery. Now, biomechanics is different. You're not aiming for a full correction and tibial under and medial release is certainly not on when, when you're using uni. 
Now, this patient came to me two years after the uni, having done it somewhere else. Uh, and you can see that this is a uh, overcorrected uni. This the knee is in valgus. In two years' time, patient has developed severe uh, lateral compartment arthritis. Also has severe patellar femoral. So obviously, probably was a bad surgical choice as well as a bad patient selection. So let's look at the early failure analysis of in in the literature. You know, we've gone through this talk earlier. We have seen many of those. Aseptic loosening is quoted to be the highest reason for uni revision. It's 28 to 59 percent in papers. Now, overall incidence tends to be 1.5 to 2.7% in the midterm follow-up, which is pretty low, actually. Arthritis progression uh, as a reason is in 4.2% of revisions in this paper. Pain uh, is main, mainly 8 and 10%. Bearing dislocation for a mobile boring unit is a real problem. And fracture and medial collapse is again reported only in 2% uh, uh, you know, of the revisions that are being done. So just to show you some examples, and this patient uh, had a bilateral unit done uh, elsewhere, and this was the preoperative x-rays. You can see that the patient has uni, but I think this looks like a good indication for a uni. And uh, this was what was done for uh, right side on the medial side. This is for, done for the left side. Let's concentrate on the right side here. And in a matter of two months' time, the, uh, tib uh, medial, uh, the tibial tray started shifting. And the surgeon then thought that let me, let me augment this with a couple of screws and, uh, you know, did that. And then over a period of time, both sides continued to collapse. And this patient came to me at about five, uh, I think six years following the uni. And this was the revision. And you can imagine the amount of bone defect that one is going to be left with massive bone defects on, on both sides. Uh, as you can see, had to be built up and revisions were done for both sides. So this was definitely not a simple straightforward revision uh, TKA. Uh, so let's understand what was the problem here in the first place. Why did this, uh, you know, uh, the collapse? And you have to try and critically anal analyze this knee. Now, especially on the right side, if you can see the uh, in the postoperative X-ray, this is already overhanging on the medial side. So tibial tray is probably medialized. It could have been a little lateralized, and so is the femur. Femur also is medialized, and th this poly actually is slightly coming beyond the tibial tray here. So that means there is a problem on day one itself. And uh, similar thing you can see on the left side as well. It would have been certainly lateralized. You can see, you know, it's not it's still on the media. It could easily, and it's a subtle, you know, uh, difference in uh, what could have been or what should have been and what actually you see. So these are possibly the reasons for uh, the medial collapse. Now, another patient, this patient again uh, had a unit done elsewhere. And these were the post-operative x-rays of the same patient. Patient never was happy. In a matter of six weeks, uh, this medial side started collapsing and fracturing. So the surgeon put the plate on. They went on to unite. Uh, and uh, another uh, six months passed and the poly started dislocating. That's, I think, obviously secondary to the uh, you know, medial collapse and obviously medial laxity. Now, one uh, bad surgical decision led to another bad surgical decision. So his surgeon thought that, let me put in a thicker poly and try to get the medial balance. So he tried to put thicker poly in. It still would, uh, started dislocating on table. So in another 24 hours time, he decided to augment that, uh, you know, uh, put in an anchor for the medial uh, collateral ligament, trying to, you know, put it in. And this one bad surgical decision after another, and then it got infected. Okay. And uh, this is the stage at which the patient came to me, uh, one broken screw inside, uh, infected uh, with staph aureus, and uh, needed to undergo two stage revision. So this is what was done first stage. Uh, everything healed up in, in two months time. I went down and did a proper revision. So <clears throat> this is basically uh, unfortunate surgical errors. I mean, I would not blame uni for that. It's obviously a surgeon and a surgical decision making was to blame here. The bony resection for uni you consider. Uh, no, hang on. The image lost there. So usually bony resection when you do it for uni is much less than TKR on the femoral side, but it's usually same or more on the tibial side. And that tends to have a bearing when it comes to revising that. So bone loss usually is from both and femoral, both tibial and femoral side when it comes to revising. Resection uh, from the uh, opposite side is has to be done. Uh, you have loss of posterior condyle uh, on the medial side, and as a result, you have trouble. Uh, on the tibial side, one has to either use a bone graft or metal augments along with the stem. And uh, you have to use augments and a stem, uh, as you can see here. So anybody thinks that, oh, revision of uni is simple. This patient actually I had operated this almost more than 20 years back. And massive bone loss, massive bone defects. And uh, just to show you, leave you with 
uh, the, the thought that not all revisions of uni are simple and this required a proper full stage revision. So uni has come a long way, no question about it. Surgical indications are better defined, excellent criteria are better defined, excellent functional outcome and long term data is still uh, is awaited. So where do we stand today? I think it's applicable for a small percentage of case, uh, cases, technically demanding surgery and obviously with pitfalls, surgeons has to really feel confident about performing a good uni. It's cannot, it's definitely not a stopgap procedure before TKR, as it was said some time ago. It is not a stopgap procedure. There are good uh, outcomes reported, you know, 10 to 15 year outcomes are also good. Uh, and uh, conversion to a total knee may not always be easy. So consider uni only if it is appropriate, not because it's a fashion trend. Thank you.